Space opens an endless abyss of horror, on the edge of which a person realizes his powerlessness and insignificance. Hello everyone, my name is Strange, and I believe that people should know the truth. My people risked their lives to extract classified materials from the archive of the Special Operations Forces. The report described contact with an unidentified phenomenon. Even I am not allowed to publish much of the report, as the resonance can be catastrophic. But I decided that the world should know the truth, and today, I am publishing a story based on this report. All names have been changed for security reasons. And here is the report itself. Nancy, how gentle you are today, how good. The gentle velvety skin touched his cheek. He wanted to enjoy this warmth, beauty, passion. Just one move, like this, and I'll kiss her on the lips. I'm my ranch and now she's going to be mine. Nancy, I love you. It sounded distant, almost a whisper. Rise, then again. The vision began to dissolve. The ranch melted like smoke. Tenderness was replaced by the cold fabric of the pillow. A loud and menacing rumble sounded right in my ear. Get up, rookie. What are your lips sticking out? Are you trying to kiss me? Come on, get up. The body jumped out of the bunk like a string. The hands automatically began to grab a tunic and protected trousers from the stool. That's it, I'm soapy to sleep. And it concerns everyone else. A few minutes later, the entire platoon, exactly 32 people, was lined up in front of a row of bunk beds. The black platoon commander walked in front of the formation, looked at the soldiers and peered into each face. He had such a feature, to look through as it were, and at everyone at the same time. Attention! Now you will be instructed. Listen carefully and do not ask unnecessary questions. What's the matter, Davy? A burly fellow with tattooed arms, Corporal McKinsey, stepped forward slightly. Is it an alarm? A war with the Reds? Set it aside. The whole barracks rang. A trim captain in the uniform of the Special Operations Forces appeared in front of the formation, looked at all the soldiers, and looked into the eyes of the corporal. McKinsey couldn't stand the look and pressed his chin to his chest. After that, he tried for a long time to explain to himself what was in the captain's gaze, but he could not find the words. Something stinging, punishing, and icy, like a dead block. Ladies, from now on, your entire platoon is at my disposal. I am Captain John Watowix of the U.S. Army Special Operations Forces, and your immediate commander remains your platoon Senior Corporal Instructor Davy Smith. Count on the first, second, and third. Half an hour later, the entire platoon was loaded onto two tented vehicles. No one explained their task to the soldiers, there were no introductions, but everyone was armed. Corporal McKinsey looked around and pulled a pack of cigarettes out of a camouflage pea jacket. Looking questioningly at Smith, he nodded his head approvingly then sat down next to the corporal. Give me a cigarette, McKinsey. The corporal handed over the pack, waited, then lit a cigarette for himself and the surgeon instructor. Listen, Davy, what's the matter? What is the task? The platoon leader took a drag and blew smoke towards the curtain of the tent. Look at the soldiers and approached the corporal a little. I don't know myself, this queen from the Special Operations Forces didn't say anything. Additional information is available on site. Smith adjusted the holster and pulled the pea jacket down slightly, took on a drag. I heard out of the corner of my ear that some helicopter crashed in the hills, 50 kilometers from Jackson, almost on the very border of Wyoming. I think our platoon has been pulled out for a sweep. McKinsey grunted, leaning on a light machine gun. I'm sorry, they found rescuers. Freeze your ass in the woods now, and the frost is 20 degrees. 25. Okay, set aside. Look, McKinsey, keep an eye on the people. And keep an eye on this one, your core fan, narrow-eyed Jimmy. In general, I hope for you. So far, this is your combat mission. Understood? Yes. Don't you understand? The corporal opened the curtain of the tent, threw out a cigarette, straightened his pea jacket, and cleared his throat. That's right. The drill surgeon looked at his watch. At the head of the column, in an armored Hummer, rode Captain SSO Watowix. On his lap, in an open tablet, lay a map of the area with the designation of topography, settlements, and roads. A red dot was clearly visible on the gray lines, which shifted like an arrow in the direction of Yellowstone and ended with another dot. The driver squinted at the map. Captain, we will arrive at the unloading point soon, 10 to 15 minutes. What is this group like already? The captain sighed. The third, if this one fails, then we'll connect a special agent. Now they are preparing a new group at the training ground. 
Have they been instructed? No, but the situation is being fully worked out at the training ground. The first two groups, and this third one is blind. The driver looked at the captain, their eyes met, measured for a few seconds, but this time the captain was the first to look away. The driver spat out the window. Okay, here we are. The soldiers deftly jumped out of the cars into the snow, warmed up, checked their weapons, and talked quietly. Dawn was breaking on the horizon between the heavily forested Wyoming hills. Burr, it's so cold. Would it feed us? The signalman, narrow-eyed Jimmy, a short Korean, nudged his sidekick, the corporal, in the shoulder. Yeah, now you're going to have a restaurant and girls like in Iraq. Look, the captain is coming. The captain got out of the Hummer and walked towards the soldiers. The surgeon instructor ordered the formation, nodding approvingly and waiting for the soldiers to line up. Watowitz put the tablet behind his back and adjusted his cap. Soldiers, you have a task ahead of you. Four days ago, a helicopter crashed in Square 43. Together, we'll come through this fucking frozen forest. Find a wrecked car and the pilots, or their bodies. Is everything clear? A slender that's right rang out from the line. Surgeon instructor, come to me for reconnaissance. Watowix and Smith headed for the Hummer. The captain spread out the map and a clipboard on the hood. Look in this square. The captain pointed to the first red dot. The helicopter is out of order. We don't know exactly what happened there. We work on the radar. Then the damaged helicopter shifted here. The captain ran his finger over the map and crashed at this point. So it's about seven kilometers. Did he fly seven kilometers damaged? It turns out that way. And Smith, your job is to set the task for people and calm the forest. Is that clear? That's right. Then command. I recommend dividing the platoon into three search groups. I will lead one group. You will lead the second. And the third, appoint a corporal. Will he cope? Will he cope? Command. The captain rolled up the clipboard. We're moving out in 15 minutes. The first group is with me to the crash site. You and yours to the first point. And the third is calming the forest around between our groups, approaching the crash site. Five minutes later, the drill surgeon began giving orders to his platoon. McKinsey, take the narrow-eyed one and the first squad. I'll go with the second one. The captain will take the third one. Smith spat at his feet. I don't like all this. Keep in touch via a closed radio channel. Yeah, this is the helicopter, the pilots. And they raised it to combat. Consider it. The armament is considered complete. Explosives are just not enough, like in Iraq, right, surgeon instructor? Okay, corporal, we're leaving in five minutes. Keep an eye on the people, especially those Dan Lagnos. Tell someone to take a piss, and what else is there for someone? Without a hitch. That's right, surgeon instructor. The snow was loose and high. It was hard to walk. Corporal McKinsey pulled off his helmet, then his hat, and wiped his sweaty forehead. He scooped snow into his palm and rubbed it over his face. Don't stretch, pull yourself up. Everyone keep an eye out, report any unusual things to me. Hey McKinsey, can we arrange a rest stop? Narrow-eyed Jimmy caught up with the corporal and also scooped up snow. Do you have a cigarette? You need to smoke your own in this, Jimmy. Let's not do your usual tricks. We'll come through the forest and go back to the barracks. The corporal handed a pack of cigarettes to his friend. 10 o'clock in the morning. Mark my words, we're not going back to the barracks today. Listen, McKinsey, what have you got there? Blood. Corporal McKinsey touched his face with his hands and then stared at his fingers in amazement. They were covered in blood. He rubbed his face under his nose again and instinctively tilted his head back. Pain shot through his temples, and with fading consciousness, he snatched out narrow-eyed Jimmy, who fell to his knees. Blood was running from his nose and eyes. Your mother. At that moment, the entire squad crouched in pain. The soldiers fell into the snow, rolled and beat their heads, clutching at each other, looking for help. Each of them felt as if something last, deadly, had accumulated in his head and exploded with a piercing crack. If they could have seen at that moment, they would have seen a light bluish glow descending on them from the tops of the snow-covered pines, enveloping and destroying. Private Pillars to me, a freckled, Ungainly and long soldier ran up to the surgeon instructor, the antenna of a field radio peeking out from behind him. Give me a link to McKinsey and hurry up. The soldier began to ask for a corporal to search on different waves. He's not answering. Your mother. Maybe their quartz is discharged. I've told narrow-eyed about this many times. Maybe, maybe. 
The surgeon instructor was starting to get annoyed by this situation. Squad, listen to my command. We go out into the square, come through, and move away to the place of unloading. We wait for the others and come back. He silently mentioned the captain of the SSO, the helicopter, helicopter pilots, communist enemies, and the entire American army, in which he had to do God knows what. They'd failed to calm the square. They suffered the same fate as the McKinsey squad. Captain Wontowitz was sitting in a glazed Mercedes and skimming through some documents. In the front seat, his driver was driving, the same one who drove in, in a Hummer on a snowy road two weeks ago, Captain Knob. As it was, I will report it, you know. Wachowicz put the documents in a folder and put them in his briefcase. In principle, everything went fine. Our smart guys collected everything they needed. Now the guys of their technical committee are working. And the surgeon instructor, what's his name? Smith. An instructor surgeon was killed during a battle with Islamic fundamentalists in Afghanistan. It's official. Like the last ones. Exactly. And enough of this. Here, read from the official report, Wachowicz took a piece of paper from his briefcase and handed it to the driver. 50 kilometers from Jackson, Wyoming, in square 43, a celestial anomaly was discovered by local residents. A flash of light, a comet, swept over the forest and collapsed in the Yellowstone Hills. The square is marked on the map. The testimony was recorded from the words of eyewitnesses, local residents, the Oswald couple. Eliminated, the first search group died completely and the second search group, one survivor, shows signs of mental insanity, idiocy, traces of severe radiation exposure, the third group, died completely. From the explanatory note of Captain SSO Voidovich, an unidentified flying object, here and after referred to as an anomaly, was found in Square 43. A group of the National Guard was found at the crash site. Four people were eliminated. As a result, my unit was hit by an unknown weapon, field or radiation. Attached is the conclusion of the doctors. Only I survived. From the observations and conclusions of the technical commission, the anomaly has the ability to inflict damage, followed by a period of recharging, probably the internal power of the anomaly. After a series of shocks, a long charge of seven to eight hours occurs. This time can be used for the work of technical personnel to study the anomaly. After the defeat of Corporal McKenzie's group and Surgeon Instructor Smith's group by unknown weapons, the group under my command went directly into the anomaly square. There was a third blow that had no effect on me. The group was amazed. The anomaly entered the charging period, experimentally proven, the defeat of the first and second groups. According to the results of the initial scientific and technical inspection, it was revealed. Troops of humanoid creatures in airtight overalls, three pieces, sent to the laboratory for research, classified. A unit of weapons, one piece, sent to the laboratory, classified. Sealed flasks with oily black liquid, eight pieces, left in place, begin to warm up when moving, probable danger of explosion. From the explanatory note on the preliminary conclusions, the energy source could not be detected. Radiation exposure is applied up to two to three times, after which the anomaly gets up for recharging. The last interval is eight hours and 37 minutes. The evacuation was carried out in a timely manner. The area is cordoned off by special forces at a distance inaccessible to radiation damage. Currently, a special agents group is being prepared. Prisoners sentenced to death have been transferred from the state of Texas to perceive the radiation factor in the subsequent approach to the anomaly. What do you say? Captain Knob shivered. You know what, Johnny? Will they not send us to perception ourselves later? Wachowicz chuckled. We would like to, we have already sent it a long time ago. The anomaly doesn't work on me. I went with the group three times and nothing happened. That's it. Then you'll be sent to the experiments like these little greys. Fuck you. Okay, John, don't overdo it. Where to? I'm going to report now, and then we'll go to the training ground. It's time to test the special component. Have the scientists at least unearthed something, or are we just burning a soldier? Watch Hoex turned around, getting out of the Mercedes, and held his hand over his head. Through the roof, Russians and chinks will be hanging around our asses now. Washington, 1998. If you think that this is not proof of the existence of aliens, then you are right. There is much more evidence and on our channel we will reveal all the secrets and evidence of their presence. Subscribe to the channel and send me your stories related to aliens by email.
you will find contacts in the About the Channel section. Together, we will force the authorities of all countries to disclose all the information they have. After all, people should know the truth.